and Shaitan knows that better than you. He does. And you know what? You know what else? The way, you know how people like to dress provocatively now? Like if I go to Target or Walmart or any other store to even buy my kids some, some clothes, I can't find decent clothes anymore for my girls. They're like 9, 10, you know, 8 years, 7 years old. I can't go to the store and buy any decent clothes. I have to go to the boys section to find sweatpants for them. <laughs> Mothers here know what I'm talking about because they, they make horrible clothes. Like, like I, I can't even say it on stage kinds of clothes for kids now because they're trying to sexualize children. They're trying to do this, right? Now when you see that, when you, when you walk through the aisle of the kids' section, you know what I think of it as, by the way, they do this in the toy section. In the toy section, back in the day, Barbie, long dress, you know, and now brass, shorter and shorter skirts, more and more huge lips with makeup on them, right? With like eyeliner and all of it, you know, brass. You see the brass, right? And they're, they're selling like hotcakes. Those things go. I, I actually experiment with my children. When I take my girls sometimes to the toy store, I put a brat in the cart. I'm like, take that out, it's disgusting. I was like, why is it disgusting? Because I say it's disgusting or you think it's disgusting? Explain to me why it's disgusting. I like it. <laughs> I, think, I think it's nice. Don't you think we should give this to your younger sister? No, what? no, this is wrong. Why is it wrong? Explain it to me. You have to stand up for yourself and explain it to me. I don't want to hear an artificial answer. Because sometimes kids tell you what you want to hear. I want to know how you're thinking. Why is this wrong? Why is this bad? You know? And I have to teach them how to articulate themselves. But anyway, I, I mentioned this to you because the, one of the earliest, earliest attacks of Shaitan, this is when he was beginning his career. He wanted us, he wanted our parents to eat from the tree. You remember? How much time you got left? <laughs> he wanted us to eat from the, the, our parents to eat from the tree. You recall this? Allah mentions with Lam al Ta'ali. It's called Lam al Ta'ali. Lam al Ta'ali means the reason why He wanted us to eat from the tree. The, the, uh, the Lam will explain why. He says, He wanted them to go to the tree and eat from the tree so that He could expose to each of them what was covered of their ugliness. He wanted them to lose their clothes. He wanted them to be provocative in front of each other. This is what he wanted. This, is, this was, was his way of humiliating, because Adam was honored, and what better way to humiliate someone but to remove their clothes. You know? And he wanted that for both our mother and our father. What is happening in the world of design? What is happening in the world of entertainment? How are you justifying yourself watching television shows that have, the following has sexual content? You're like, oh, it's just, some sexual content. It's a sum. I can forward it. You know? I can skip that part. I just see the first second of it. Then I'll say a stuff little lot. Then I'll watch it again where nobody else is there. It's disgusting, but this is what Shaitan has done. And he knew that human beings will lose their dignity if they lose their clothes. And now we are living in times where losing the clothing is celebrated. It's just celebrated. Why are guys working out if they're gonna stay dressed? You can, you can tell me you're working out because you want to be healthy, but there are plenty of other exercises you can do, but you want to build certain muscles of your body because eventually you want to find an excuse where somebody sees you. It's sad. Even guys. Even guys. A, a girl, you know. Why are they, there, there are girls that are dressed, and they, they want to tell themselves they're dressed Islamically. They're, they're covered head to toe. But covering isn't just the Islamic code of dress. It's about protecting, covering what Allah beautified within you. So if you're, co if you're covered head to toe, but you're wearing skin-tight clothes, you know, or you're drawing attention to certain parts of your body with the way, the kinds of clothes you're wearing, you know. You don't, don't kid yourself. You know. And I'm talking to you like your older brother. I'm not, uh, not going to you know, beat around the bush. It is like it is. My daughters have to hear this from me too. So I'm not going to come and talk to you like just a, a formal lecture, somebody might get offended. Look, I'll tell you like it is. You're 14, 15 years old, you're 16 years old, 17 years old, eight, there's no reason you should be dressing like that. There's no reason. And don't kid yourself if you're ready to And I'm not going to call you out if you're walking by, hey, best better or whatever. I'm not going to call you out, but this is my opportunity to call you out. And nobody else can call you out. You have to call yourself out. You have to stop letting Shaitan trick you into thinking, this is your way of looking beautiful. This is not, this is not, this is sad. 
This is what it, it's people who don't have anything higher to find meaning in. This is what they find meaning in. I'm not saying you shouldn't dress nicely. Girls have a natural tendency to want to dress nicely. Guys can look like homeless people and they're fine. Girls, girls have a thing. They want to dress nicely. That's fine. You know, I wouldn't dress like this if my mom didn't tell me. I, just, I wouldn't do it. You know. So my mom said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, okay, mom, I'll dress up. Okay, okay. You can go like that? Like that? Cool lecture? I was like, okay, mom. All right. It's fine. I'll dress like a human. But, but girls want to look pretty. That's fine. You know what? Cool. That's cool. No problem. Allah even says when he revealed clothing, he said warisha, and means to look well, look nice. He did. But not provocative, and you are smart enough to know the difference, and please don't pretend you don't. You do. You know very well. And your mother calls you out on it too. Your mother calls you out and says, Mom, come on, don't say that. You're embarrassing me. No, she's not embarrassing you. She's giving you a reality check. The shaitan's messing with you, and your mom's trying to help you out. Don't dress like that, don't dress like this. And then there are the sad situations in our families where the mother tells the daughter, take the hijab off. Why is your jabab so loose? Why can't you get a tighter one? That'll look nicer. You know? There are those sad, disgusting situations. That needs to stop. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know, I know. Let me pick on the boys now and you can, and you can go. <laughs> so that was one trickery of shaitan that I wanted to highlight for the young ladies, for the young men, just very quickly. One of the meanings of the word shaitan, shaba, is halaka wa hadarak. Actually, ihtarak wa hadarak, which means he got set on fire. Literally, to be set on fire. It's used as a figure of speech in Arabic for losing one's temper. So you justify your misbehavior by losing your temper and storming out of a conversation. And then you still do what you do. So your mom says, stop playing video games. Forget it! <laughs> and you just walk away. And you, now your mother's like, ah, I'm so angry. It's okay, come back, come back. No, mom! You're always interrupting my very important, you know, purpose in life. You know, or is it half-life? I don't know what the game is called. You, know, you, you hide, you justify your misbehavior by just acting all tough. So nobody can correct you. Anybody tries to give you advice, you all like, hey! All right, whatever, whatever, I'm not coming back. I don't need this, you know. This is shaitan. That's shaitan. When you're incapable of taking advice, incapable of being corrected, just you get flared up. You just get flared up. I gave khutbah yesterday, I was really happy with myself. I gave khutbah, and usually my khutbahs don't make any sense. Yesterday it made sense, I thought. It made sense, you know. I was like, okay, alhamdulillah, this one went well. Uncle comes up to me and says, your khutbah made no sense at all. <laughs> It had no content, and I did not understand anything you were saying. It was completely impractical. It was terrible. You have an obligation to speak clearly in front of the youth. You did not connect with the youth at all. I thought your chuppah was terrible. And I listened to that, and I said, okay, do you have any suggestions? And he said, yeah, I have lots of suggestions. And my family was waiting downstairs. They're in the car, kids getting cranky and all that. I just sat with the uncle for 30 minutes, and he gave me suggestions, and I wrote them. I literally wrote them. I put them in my phone, like, I don't want to save them, and I have them. And I disagree with some of them, but I agree with some of them. You have to learn to take criticism. It's okay. I did not say, excuse me, are you on YouTube? <laughs> Guys, don't get heated when somebody corrects you. Chill out. Just accept it. Take it. They're probably right. Because you're guys. <laughs> you know? So I, I pray that we're able to combat the attacks of shaitan and raise ourselves to the point, you know? We have to become those people. May Allah Azza wa elevate all of us in our status. And may Allah Azza wa take the good of what is said and forgive the wrong that is said. Barakallahu <laughs> alaykum.